But your next one, your next choice of Room 101 is maybe quite controversial, um, because you've chosen football. Yeah. Well, I don't understand it. I'm a rugby player. Uh, well, there's two people over there agree with you. Any, any rugby players here? Great. What positions? Flanker. Thank you. Good luck. I used to try and avoid you. I used to play in the wing. <laughs> All these. I'll tell you a couple of rugby stories, you know. <laughs> I had a friend. There's the All Blacks were playing Ireland. And this Irish friend of mine went over to Dublin. He hadn't got a ticket, but he thought he'd get one out of one of the tuts. So he says, anybody here got tickets? Yes, I'm here. I've got the ticket here. He said, how much is 500 pounds? He said, for Christ's sake, for 500 pounds, I could get the most beautiful woman in Dublin. He said, ah, yes, but she wouldn't give you 45 minutes each way with the band <laughs> playing in the middle. <laughs> Well, let's, let's, we've got to give football a chance here. Let's, um, we've got, there, is, there, is, there is great skill and beauty in football. It does happen. Well, it's so simple, you see. It's a, a rugby game. It's turgid. Scrums, rucks, malls, all this going on all the time. Football, this, that's all it is. <laughs> well, yes, but it, well, it's a simpler game, perhaps. But there is, there is, there is beauty within the game. We've got a, we're, we're, perhaps the most famous footballer these, these Isles have produced, George Best. This, this is... This is, un this is wonderful. Yes, he was. He was great. Players are losing this ball in the sun, but it was best. We picked up that kid flick. Driven wide. Yes! How about that? Yeah. I mean, you don't often get that in a football game. <laughs> so does that not make you feel a little bit, little bit uh, softer towards football? Well, that, that particular instance, I was at the game. Were you? Yeah. And I saw him do it, and I thought, Christ, I'm glad he's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad the Thank cameras you, were there. Clapper. <laughs> <laughs> like there's two one-armed men sitting next to each other, I think. <laughs> uh, would, you say, uh, would you say that football is, a, or that rugby, rather, is a more masculine game than football? Well, I used to play in the wing. And bloody hell, I was 12 stone then, mind you, mm -hmm. much heavier. And it's a lovely game. I enjoyed every minute of it. I still watch it, and I still, in my mind, still play it. I still see a move, as I wouldn't have done that on the fastest inside. Mm -hmm. The people that rugby is a man's game. We've got a clip here, which is uh, perhaps unfair, but I, I, it, it makes me laugh. So that's the only reason why it's in, really. But this is the proof that rugby really is a man's game. Have a look at this. It was a London derby between Richmond and Wasps. They were competing in the final of the Women's National League. This penalty try helped Wasps to victory by 19 points to nil. He's going to try. But, but, and but, an extraordinary conversion was given a helping hand. <laughs> See, this is worth seeing again, this. I think this may be a fundamental difference between men and women, where women aren't so competitive. They want to help each other out. <laughs> Let's run it again, and I'll, I'll show you what I, what I mean. It's not going over. I'll push it over there. <laughs> we can't put football into Room 101, because um, if we did that, um, for example, the nation is brought together through our hatred of Jimmy Hill. And if we didn't have football, we, we wouldn't have a hate figure like Jimmy Hill. Italy had Mussolini, we've got Jimmy Hill. I'm sorry, Spike, um, no, football can't go into room 101, I'm afraid. I'll have to take it with you. And get rid of it. <laughs> OK, Spike, your, your very last item for consideration to go into room 101 is parties. <laughs> and to represent parties, we have, a, we have our waiter here, and we have a, we have a melon with bits of cheese stuck on sticks and old fag ends, because you, you always get this at parties, fag ends floating around in beer and stuff. And you can, you can see the way I feel about parties, actually, and you, you, it's the forced jollity of the occasion. Did you, would you, could I tempt you into a funny hat? Yeah. There we are. <laughs> we're, we're now going to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Having a good time? 
Oh, I'm gonna have to keep this on. No, take it off. <laughs> The thing with parties is there, um, well, you tell me, Spike, what is it you don't like about parties? Well, <clears throat> they all get pissed. <laughs> and nobody knows what anybody's saying anymore. They all stand in groups and talk a lot. And that's it. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a party. I've, I think I'm a loner. That's the trouble is, yeah. I'm an outsider. Well, you don't like What I'm doing inside. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, um, what about on VE Day? There was a big party. Did you have a party that night? Yes, remember? we did. I was in a place called Madaloni in Italy, and uh, RSN, uh, he filled up the fountain with wine. So uh, everybody, including me, got pissed. <laughs> so pissed, we threw him in the, into the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Did he come out again? No, he drank his way out. <laughs> <laughs> you end up having the same conversation over and over again about, oh, I saw you do this. I or... saw you on television. Exactly. Yeah. People say, you're Spike Milligan. I said, I know who I am. <laughs> you go away and find out who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a, have a quick straw poll amongst the audience here. Uh, uh, who likes parties here? Who actually enjoys parties? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's sort of... I mean, I don't enjoy them because they're, they're, they're loud, they're, they're, there's lots of drink going around, you can't have a conversation, there's always loud music going on. Um, and you end up getting so pissed you're trying to get off with somebody or whatever and <laughs> you wake up the next day and you think, oh dear, what have I done? I don't, I don't even know his name. You know, that's... <laughs> I think parties, without any doubt, the world... What do, you, do you have any plans for the millennium? I'm going to bed. <laughs> Very sound of voice. Party said goodbye to Rue 101. In they go. <laughs> well, Spike, you had enormous success there in getting stuff into Room 101. Ladies and gentlemen, Spike Milligan. And if any proof was needed that parties are a bad thing, take a look at this footage from a bunch of people who should be celebrating the greatest night of their life. It's the Labour Party after their win at the general election. Take a good look at John Prescott really letting himself go. Until the next time, good night. <laughs>